Hi, my name's Lucinda Ewan and I'm here on the banks of the River Tweed today to be part of the Sportfish Spring Spectacular. Today we're going to try our chances at spring salmon fishing. Let's go inside and take a look at the equipment firstly. Okay, so the rod I'm fishing with today is a 14 foot rod. That's because the River Tweed's quite a big river, so I do need to be able to get some distance. So if we're fishing the smaller rivers, a nice setup I tend to use is somewhere around the 12 to 13 foot mark. As we progress onto the bigger rivers, we then go for the larger rods, somewhere around 14, possibly even as big as 16 foot. The reel I've got today is an 8 to 10 weight reel. That would match up ideally with this rod. From the reel here, I'm just going to demonstrate to you what's on here. We've got our drag system. So what we want is a nice firm drag, but not too stiff and not too slack so that the line comes out and ends up in a bird's nest on your reel. Want that drag set enough so that if a fish takes it, it pretty much sets the hook itself. So we put the backing on here, this just helps prevent building too much memory up on the um, line, but it also is there if we were to get a big fish and he was gonna run away with you, you've got plenty of line for him to take. So what do we do next? Then we need to attach what's called our running line and our shooting head. Now what I'd recommend for a beginner or somebody just starting out in salmon fishing is just looking at something like an integrated line so your head and your running line is already attached to each other. And again, you should be able to pair your lines up. It's nice and easy. A lot of them do explain what weight it would pair up with best for your rod and reel that you're using. Again, going back to me, for example, I'm using an eight to 10 weight reel. I would use an eight to 10 weight line, probably is a nine, 10. I do like mine a little bit just on the heavier side so I can feel it if I'm not casting great. So now we've had a look at our shooting heads, let's have a look at our tips. The reason we use tips is because we want to fish deeper in the spring. Here I've got a couple of examples which allow us to get deeper down in the water. So we want to be fishing so much as kind of like, depending on the depth of the pool. Um, if it's not very deep, we could be just fishing four, five inch per second. But if we're fishing somewhere which is a bit deeper, we want to get down a little bit quicker. We then have these tips which are called T-tips. You can get T-10s, T-12s, T-14s. And what that basically means, it's a tungsten coated tip, which is how they use it to get the line down. This one, for example, is a nine inch per second. And this one here is not so fast. This isn't your T10, this is just a normal sink tip, which will get you down roughly at three inch per second. And this number 10 here would tell you that it's 10 foot long. So let's have a look at what I'm gonna to use today. Because I'm on the tweed, we're going into quite a deep pool. I'll be sticking on a T14. It's really cold outside, air temperature's four degrees, and we've got a horrible east wind that we're having to battle with. So I really want to get down there today. So we've talked a little bit about the tips, but don't feel like you have to go out there and buy every single tip. Keep it simple. Buy one for a floating height, maybe it's a floating intermediate line, then one a little bit deeper, something around three or four inch per second, and then maybe it's a really heavy, heavy tip, maybe it's a T10, T12, or a really fast sink tip. Let's just have our look at our tippet. I fish with something around 15 pounds. In the spring, we've always got a good chance of a really big fish and a lot of these fish don't tend to be soft when you're playing them. So because we're fishing deep in the springtime, we need to think about how our fly would sink in the water. So if we've got sink and tips on, our tip's gonna be coming down in the water and we've got our tube fly on. Now with our leader here, what I tend to do in the springtime is just keep it nice and short. People usually recommend something just like an arm's width, which is fine. We don't want it too long because what we want is this fly to continue to sink down with the line. So depending again on the river you're fishing, for example today I'm on the Tweed which is usually a quite clear running river. Most people tend to stick and keep it simple and use something black and yellow. You want quite a big tube on, it's springtime, you want to get it down, that's why some of them come with copper bodies. 
and we want the fish to see this fly as well. We really want to get it right down in front of them. We want to make them aggressive. If salmon come in the rivers, they don't actually feed when they come into our systems, so we're there more just to aggravate them. If I'm fishing rivers, which carry a bit more of a tea stain or a peat colour, I'm tempted to fish something black and orange, black, yellow and orange. Sometimes we can get a little bit obsessed as an angler as well. We can go out there and buy every fly in the world, but really in the springtime, keep it simple. As you can see here, I've maybe got half a dozen. That's enough for the time being. I think what's more important is keeping your fly in the water. Spring salmon are quite hard to come by. So at this time of year, it's a lot about persistence and perseverance. So now we've had a look at equipment. I think it's time we go and get some gear on and get ourselves on the river. Okay, so we've just arrived here at our first pool that we're going to fish. But before we enter the water, it's really important that we go through safety first, as it's a major thing on any river that we're fishing. As you can see, I'm stood here and I've got my hat and glasses on, which is an absolute must for any angler fishing. As we're aware, it's spring fishing. And one thing to note this time of year is that we're fishing with winter river levels, which means our water tends to be flowing much higher at the minute. If you are out on the river and you're heading out alone, let somebody know where you're going. Please pay attention to the weather forecast. It is prone to floods at this time of year. And if you're fishing low water beats, then please be cautious of tide times. We get spring tides, etc., which can creep up on us and be quite aggressive at times. You'll see here as well, I've got a life jacket. If you don't know the water you're wading in, it is recommended really that you do wear a life jacket. Also in my right hand here, I've got a wading staff, which comes in very useful which gives you extra stability in the water and it's also a good guide to tell you what's in front of you if you can't see your feet. Okay, so this is the Jeffreys pool I'm about to get in and fish now. Let's just have a look at it and see where we think some potential spots are for salmon. We've got these cross sections coming round here, which is a really good lane spot. You let your fly come round and let your fly come right on the dangle, really let it come in there because you'll be surprised that fish will sit on the edges there. So if we look further out into the middle of the section, we see a bit of white broken water boiling there. That's because there's a large stone there. It's a really good holding spot for salmon to come in. They tend to lie in front of it, to the sides, often behind. So when I'm fishing a pool, I tend to spend a little bit more time there just covering that area. So how do we fish the pool when we're salmon fishing? Well, we take our first cast, and as a general rule, as we cast, our fly comes round. As we come round onto the dangle, I like to just give a little bit of retrieval there, just to keep the fly moving. After the cast, if nothing's happened, we start to retrieve our line in. Three steps down, cast again. Sometimes if I'm not getting deep enough without changing tips, what I can do is put a couple of upstream men's in my cast, take a couple of steps downstream, and that just gives that fly more time to sink down. So as we enter the pool, what we don't want to do is worry about getting a massive line out and casting to the other side of the bank. We want to start covering all the water. So start short, just let a little bit of line out, and each cast let a little bit more out, eventually till we've got our full head out of the tip of the rod. That's when we can start taking a couple of steps in between casts. As we can see at the top of the pool, it is quite fast flowing, but then it does slow down, which means our fly can get down a little bit deeper then. Sometimes it can get a little bit too deep and a little bit too slow, which then we may need to work the fly a little bit. So we can work the fly by giving gentle, slow pulling movements, or really gentle figure of eights. We've got an upstream wind coming up the river, so I need to do what's called a circle C cast. It's a really easy cast for beginners. It'll keep that fly away from you and keep you safe. And you would perform that circle C cast off your left shoulder. So when we're fishing a little bit deeper as well, what we need to be cautious of is our fly is getting right down as well as our line. So before we progress into the next cast, Sometimes we may need to do a roll cast just to get our fly back onto the surface of the water, which can then allow us to go into our next cast. If 
fished the pool through, no success. Um, we've covered the water nicely. Now what we're gonna do is go and find another pool, give that a go, keep moving around all the time. The east wind's been absolutely brutal. Um, coming straight into my face, making casting really hard. If you are new to salmon fishing, what I do recommend is maybe getting a lesson or two, just so you can learn to cast off both shoulders, just so it's safe. Also, there's some videos on the Sportfish website you can have a look at, at how to and how to get going, which will give you some great pointers. Let's move on, keep going, don't lose the faith. Okay, so we've just come down to a different pool here. We're gonna give it a go. Um, as you can see, the top of the pool here, we've got the nice fast flow. It's quite a wide section of the river, but what it is, it's really shallow over the far side. So all the fish tend to funnel up and come up to this side of the bank. We've got this fast flowing water coming down here and just off the edge tends to be a good holding sitting spot for the fish. If you are out on the river bank alone and the river's not guided and sometimes you're wondering where's a good spot to fish, sometimes a little giveaway is a bench on the side of the river. Um, so you've got your rod stand there, there's just something usually indicates it's a good taking spot because everybody likes to sit and watch a fish get caught. We're just going to take a moment to go through my top three tips for salmon fishing. Number one is never give up. Perseverance is key. Stick at it. Keep going. Number two, salmon fishing, it's for everybody. Um, if you're new and don't be afraid to ask people for help and advice, people's really friendly. Um, you can go, there is so many places to go salmon fishing. It's not just how you see the one image. Um, look local to home, you'll be surprised how much water there is close by that you can fish. And number three is, if we're out, we're not catching, look around, enjoy the moment, enjoy the peacefulness, the calmness of it all. It really is a good benefit for your mental health. That's me finished for the day. The salmon gods weren't in my favour, but never give up, keep the hope. The reason I keep doing this is because I do know one day when you do get the take, it is an unforgettable experience. I hope this has inspired you to come out and give salmon fishing a try. Keep going, get out there, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs>